Military aircraft development is a fast-moving process in which models can come and go in the blink of an eye. Few of them have become aircraft royalty, like the B-17 Flying Fortress or the MiG-15. But only one of them is nearing a century of service, the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. The 390,000-pound long-range heavy jet bomber began as an intercontinental high-altitude nuclear bomber. But its operational capabilities have been adapted throughout the years to meet the ever-changing defense requirements. The B-52 has been in service for six decades and is now projected to be around until 2050. Soon, it will become the first aircraft to carry a hypersonic cruise missile, proving its incredible versatility once again. A new plane for air superiority. On November 23, 1945, a few months after World War II ended, the Pentagon issued a request for proposal for a new strategic bomber with a crew of five or more turret gunners. The document stated that the aircraft needed to fly long enough to be, quote, carrying out the strategic mission without dependence upon advanced and intermediate bases controlled by other countries. The aircraft would act as a counterpart to the Air Force's other long-range bomber, the Boeing B-47 Stratajet. The B-47 only had a range of 4,000 miles, roughly the distance from America to Russia. The new aircraft would potentially travel twice that range, which would allow it to perform the same mission and return without the need to refuel. Deputy Chief of Air Staff for Research and Development Curtis LeMay, then America's most famous air general, was overseeing the request. The general, also known to his men as Iron Ass LeMay, was best known for his leadership during the Tokyo bombing campaign towards the end of World War II. LeMay was part of the so-called Bomber Mafia, a close-knit group of American military top brass who maintained that long-range heavy bomber aircraft campaigning in substantial numbers would allow the United States to swiftly win any potential conflict. The Bomber Mafia's strategic and strict doctrine, influenced by war and experience, helped shape the mission of the newly formed Air Force and its strategic air command. With this new aircraft, LeMay would continue his planned air power legacy through a new era of potential nuclear war. The Buff the Army Air Force has selected a design by Boeing in 1946. As Deputy Air Force Chief, General LeMay expedited the process to secure Boeing's contract and made sure their design matched his vision for global air superiority. The Boeing design proposed a propeller-driven heavy bomber with a straight wing and six engines. However, in October of 1948, Boeing's chief engineer, Ed Wells, received news that the design was a no-go and was asked to replace the old-fashioned propellers for an all-jet design. The Boeing team locked themselves in a hotel room for a weekend and came up with a redesigned eight-engine bomber. They also built a scale model out of wood, complete with a 33-page report. Their dedication and results impressed the Air Force, and the new design was speedily approved. As the Korean War worsened, the Air Force designated this latest model as America's next intercontinental bomber and approved an initial production of 13 models. The first B-52 made its maiden flight on August 5, 1954. The B-52 Stratofortress wasn't the most aesthetic aircraft, and was eventually nicknamed the Buff, or Big Ugly Fat Fella. But the powerful aircraft, with a width the size of a conventional football field, would, against all odds, become one of the staples of the Air Force for decades to come. Proving its worth. In June of 1955, the B-52 officially entered service with the 93rd Heavy Bombardment Wing at the Castle Air Force Base in California. The Strategic Air Command began to prepare the aircraft as part of a scheme to deter and counteract the Soviet Union's fast modernizing military. Due to these ever-changing aircraft technological advances, the Air Force planned to discontinue the B-52 by the mid-1960s in favor of the XB-70 Valkyrie. The Valkyrie was still in the development phase and was designed to reach Mach 3 speed, making it less likely to be intercepted by radars or foreign aircraft. However, everything changed in 1960. On May 1st, a Lockheed U-2 spy plane was shot down by a surface-to-air missile while performing photographic aerial reconnaissance deep inside Soviet territory. The only way for a bomber to avoid Soviet attacks was to fly as close to the ground as possible and be undetectable to radars due to clutter caused by terrain. While flying at such low altitudes, the Valkyrie was barely faster than the B-52 and used more fuel while carrying a smaller payload. Plans were scrapped, and the B-52 stayed. A total of 742 models were built in eight separate series up to 1963. Operation Chrome Dome Throughout the 1960s, the United States constantly feared that a surprise attack from the Soviet Union could destroy its nuclear arsenal. Thus, the Air Force came up with Operation Chrome Dome. The operation consisted of having several B-52s armed with thermonuclear weapons flying on continuous airborne alert through different points near the Soviet Union's border. The buff bombers could fly for an indefinite amount of time with in-flight refueling and be on constant alert for a potential doomsday mission. Operation Chrome Dome lasted from 1960 to 1968. 
by the end of the decade, nuclear ballistic missiles like the Polaris could be launched from undetectable submarines, a safer method that still provided a nuclear deterrent. Competition The B-52 earned its stripes during the Vietnam War. The bomber was explicitly designed to drop nuclear payloads, but it proved to be an excellent addition to conventional raid missions. Some of them even continued flying after being hit by surface-to-air missiles. The aircraft would ultimately fly over 126,000 sorties during the war, and only 17 were lost in active combat. Still, during the 1970s, the B-52 had to prove itself once again against a seemingly more high-tech and faster bomber, the Rockwell B-1 Lancer. The B-1 was a supersonic variable sweep wing heavy bomber. It had been vetoed in the 1960s by Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, but President Richard Nixon revived the project the following decade. However, the B-1 could never come close to the buff's versatility, survivability, availability, and affordability. President Jimmy Carter canceled the Rockwell project once again upon taking office. By the 1980s, the B-52 came head-to-head with another aircraft in development, the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. This heavy strategic bomber would use state-of-the-art stealth technology, but rising costs and several delays postponed the project. The B-52 Strider Fortress remained the Air Force's favorite. The 90s. When the Soviet Union fell in 1991, more than three decades after the B-52 entered service, President George H.W. Bush ordered to stop the high-alert missions permanently launched during the Cold War. But soon after, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, and the buff was called into service as a tactical aircraft in Operation Desert Storm. During the operation, the B-52s flew over 1,600 sorties and delivered 40% of the total ordnance dropped by the coalition during the conflict. The mere sight or sound of the bomber was enough to persuade thousands of Iraqi soldiers to surrender. Five years later, the B-52 would destroy several Iraqi power stations and communications facilities during Operation Desert Strike, breaking a record for the longest distance ever flown during a combat mission. The 16,000-mile round trip from the Anderson Air Force Base in Guam took 34 hours. The B-52 also participated in NATO's bombing campaign against Yugoslavia during the Kosovo War in 1999, causing damage to bridges and destroying essential industrial plants and facilities. A new century. As the heavy bomber approached five decades of dedicated service, it continued to outperform other modern aircraft, contributing to Operation Freedom in Afghanistan in 2001 and the Battle of Baghdad in 2003, and helping bring the Second Gulf War to a thunderous close. During the early 2000s, the B-52 eclipsed its latest successor, the B-21 long-range stealth bomber. Cost delays forced the Air Force to continue using their aging but effective buffs. In October of 2012, Boeing marked the 50th anniversary of the day they delivered the last B-52 Strider Fortress to the U.S. Air Force, model number 61040. That aircraft was assigned to the Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, where it remains in active service. In 2014, the Air Force introduced the first buff aircraft upgraded with a state-of-the-art communication system developed by Boeing. According to the official Boeing press release, the Combat Network Communications Technology, or Connect, includes, quote, several communication data links, full-color LCD displays with real-time intelligence feeds overlaid on moving maps, a state-of-the-art computing network, and the ability to retarget a weapon or mission parameters in flight. The buff is still the heaviest bomber of any country's air force to ever go into mass production. The aircraft have also carried some of the greatest weapons of the past century, and when a hypersonic cruise missile is ready for manufacturing, the buff will be the first to use it. To this day, all the oldest B-52s are out of service. Most were sent to the Boneyard, although a few models reside in museums. All that remains of the project are 76 active B-52s of the H variant, which the Air Force and Boeing plan to upgrade. The objective is to expand these aircraft's lifespan well beyond 2040, reaching almost an entire century of service. According to Rebecca Grant, president of the Iris Independent Research Company, the B-52's unique combination of ruggedness and versatility makes it one of the most important aircraft in history. Quote, It can attack terrorists on hillsides, enemy ships at sea, fielded forces or fixed and mobile high-value sites. To me, the ultimate message of the B-52 story is that it is ready for conventional and nuclear missions anytime. Please comment below with your thoughts about what's considered America's best bomber, and tell us if you agree with its buff moniker. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channels.